Uh, my name's uh, Izzy, and it's my job to try and teach you some, something from the Bible this morning. And um, honestly, it's a little bit daunting um, when, when Jim asks you to stand in front of everyone and talk about uh, someone that, you know, when you heard their name, you actually weren't sure what they did, who they were, when they ruled. Um, and so this has been a bit of a, a research project for me, honestly. And um, this lesser-known king, Uzziah, I call him Uzziah. Priscilla said Uzziah. Who knows? I'd, I'm going to say Uzziah, but I just don't know. I just don't know. Now, Uzziah was, um, he was in the history books, two kings and two chronicles, which they often have repeats of the same events in. But his name is also mentioned in the prophet books, Isaiah, Hosea, Amos, and Zechariah. So it's quite hard to connect all of the dots. And honestly, when I read the Bible, I struggle with the details, the names, the places, the time in history, the context. I really struggle. But the good news for all of us and me included, is that when we read the Bible, you don't have to take in all of the details, the names and the places. Ultimately, it's about hearing God's voice and getting to know him. And even though I struggle with the detail, God speaks to me clearly. The wisdom, the lessons and the morals from the stories, the love and the heart of God, his character and his goodness, his forgiveness and faithfulness. They just really can't be missed. So I encourage you, first encouragement, read the Bible. If you struggle with reading, you can even get it read to you. Um, just, just download the Bible app on your phone and you can even get the Bible read to you. But trust me, you will find God in those pages. And the good news for us this morning is that I'm going to summarize Isaiah's life, and we're going to learn one lesson from his mistakes. Now, Isaiah became king very young, aged 16. And you'll remember that last week, Ben kind of said that the, the kings fell into one of two camps. Um, those who did right in the eyes of the Lord, and those who did evil. And Isaiah was one of the good ones. So that's, that's key to know. Now, it's absolutely amazing what Isaiah accomplished with the Lord's blessing. You will have heard some of his accomplishments in the reading that Priscilla just read. And you can still see some of his phenomenal public works in Jerusalem to this day. Then Isaiah made the classic mistake of giving in to pride and thinking that it's me. It's me that got me this far. Look at what I have done. So at age 56, Uzziah was forced to make his oldest son, Jotham, Jotham co-regent and monarch over the kingdom of Judah because he had become terribly proud. So proud that he went into the temple to burn incense to the Lord now, this was meant to be the job of a priest, and, and God had ordained for only the Levite tribe to be priests and to go into the temple and to burn incense before the Lord. And I guess to Isaiah, it's, it seemed like a simple task. He's done everything he, he's accomplished in his life. Why can't he burn incense? And for Isaiah, pride came before a fall. That's, that's a well-known phrase, and it's from Proverbs in the Bible. Now, when rebuked by the chief priest and the other leading priests, Uzziah became enraged, and then the Lord struck Uzziah with leprosy. Now, in ancient times, leprosy made you untouchable. You instantly and permanently lost your spouse, family, home, the blessing and well-being of everyone else you knew and loved. You were ostracized and then from that moment on and for the rest of your days you were an exile eventually you became disfigured hideous the walking dead even worse there's no record of Isaiah 
humbly and earnestly repenting before the Lord. And 12 years later, Uzziah died alone. And his body did not receive a kingly burial. So pride truly did come before a fall. Now the lesson, the big lesson that we learn from Uzziah's life is not to become proud. Our identity, our possessions and our accomplishments only exist by the grace of God. And as God gives, he can also take away. He is the king of kings. Now the funny thing is, Uzziah could have and should have been aware of this. Um, in fact, the whole story of the Bible kind of up and to, up to Uzziah is God's people kind of yo-yoing between faithfulness and serving God and obeying his commandments and experiencing God's goodness throughout all the trials and then forgetting God, turning to their own way and relying on their own strength and then experiencing terrible downfalls. So Isaiah could have, should have known, but it's the human condition, isn't it? We see it today. We see it in ourselves. The prophet Hosea explains it like this. As they had their pasture, they became satisfied. And being satisfied, their hearts became proud. Therefore, they forgot me. That's God saying something through Hosea. We forget God when times are good. Life becomes easy. We could, we could do it without God couldn't we? But no, if we are saying God is the king of kings, we are nothing without him and we can do nothing without him. Now Moses even, he warned Israel about this. Um, in Deuteronomy 8, after God had enabled his people to escape from slavery and had led them through the desert to the promised land, he said this to the people of Israel. I'm going to read quite a large section of it because I just I think it really, really proves the point well. So this is what Moses said to the people of God. When you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord for the, for the good land he has given you. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God, failing to observe his commands, his laws and his decrees that I'm giving you this day. Otherwise, when you eat and are satisfied, when you build fine houses and settle down, and when your herds and flocks grow large, and your silver and gold increase, and all you have is multiplied, then your heart become proud, and you'll forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. He led you through the vast and dreadful wilderness, that thirsty and waterless land with its venomous snakes and scorpions. He brought you water out of hard rock. He gave you manna to eat in the wilderness, something your ancestors had never known, to humble and test you so that in the end it might go well with you. You may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth and so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your ancestors as it is today. If you ever forget the Lord your God and follow other gods and worship and bow down to them, I testify against you today that you will surely be destroyed. Like the nations the Lord destroyed before you, so you will be destroyed for not obeying the Lord your God. Moses, he must have known. <laughs> Maybe he knew that this is what we struggle with. We struggle so hard to walk with God, to trust him each day, and to not think it's me that's king. The Bible is clear. God is king. His rule and his reign are absolute when we choose to glorify him, acknowledge his rule in our lives, and obey his commands, it is well. Now, that's not to say we won't have trials, but we have confidence that we'll experience God's goodness throughout, and it is well with our souls. 
When we become proud, we rely on our own strength and we choose our own way. Destruction will follow. Now, it might be really subtle. Destruction sounds sounds obvious, doesn't it? But for me, in my own life, it's, it's subtle. Do you know, I notice first that it's like a boredom or a monotony in my life. But I find that my love grows cold. I care less about myself and about the people around me. And the, the Bible talks about this. It says, because lawlessness abounds, the love of many will grow cold. That's, that, for me, in my life, is the first sign that I'm walking away from God. And this might not sound like destruction, but it's just the start of damaged relationships, selfish and addictive behaviors, and poor mental health. And God, in all his wisdom, has a better way for us. I just want to take a moment to reflect um, and pause. Are we proud? Do we attribute our successes to God? Or do we feel entitled to the things that we possess because we've earned them? If something was to be taken away from you, would you still be you? Would God's goodness still be true to you? If you lost your job, your status, your health, home, money, spouse, or children. Let's, let's pray for a second. Lord, we relinquish our control to you, the King of Kings. The earth is yours and everything in it. Every good and perfect gift comes from you. And by your grace, we are saved. We thank you and we glorify you. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Amen. I'm just going to close up the talk by giving really very short points, three points, that are kind of tips to help us stop Avoid becoming proud. Number one, glorify God. As well as worshipping him and telling him how great he is, thank him for every blessing. Attribute success to him and walk through your failures with him. Let everything you do be through him and with him. Number two, We heard in the gospel passage, serve others. Consider others' needs before your own. Serving one another is a brilliant way to learn humility, avoid pride, as long as we go back to number one, glorifying God and not self-congratulating. And number three, pray for those in authority. With great power, comes great responsibility and many in authority will stumble pray for our church leaders pray for government and may the king of kings the one with the ultimate authority receive all glory and honor amen